I love Christmas. I love the parties. I love the presents. I love the John Lewis advert. Uh, I love the programs on television. I'm excited about the Downton Abbey Christmas special. I love riding along on my Boris bike by the Natural History Museum and seeing the ice skating and the twinkling lights. I love the magic of nights like tonight, singing carols by candlelight. I love that uniquely British moment where we choose to combine Brussels sprouts, half a bottle of Baileys, and Her Majesty the Queen. And then, of course, uh, there are nativity plays. I'm sure you'll have your own story, your own memory, but uh, I'll never forget when our oldest child came home uh, having won his first part in a nativity play. Secretly, Sammy and I were hoping that he would be Joseph, of course, uh, but no. Uh, was he one of the wise men? No. Uh, presumably, therefore, he was going to be one of the shepherds? No. Our son had uh, won the lesser known part of the pork pie of Bethlehem. Uh, <laughs> the pork pie of Bethlehem. It, 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 it's wrong on so many levels. And, You probably know the story about the teacher who wanted to find out how much her children in her, her class really knew about the nativity story. So she said, now what did the shepherds find in the manger? And a little girl's hand goes straight up, very, very keyed. And so she says, yes, what, 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 what did the shepherds find in the manger? And the little girl said, an egg. <laughs> the teacher was speechless just for a moment. And so the little girl continued and said, you know, the, the egg that the baby hatched out of. <laughs> the teacher said, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't think that's quite how it happened. She didn't know if she was teaching theology or biology at this point. <laughs> the little girl said, well, you, you told us that's what happened. She said, I didn't. You told us, miss. You said that Mary laid him in a manger. <laughs> Trying to move on quickly, uh, the teacher said, well, does anyone know the baby's name? Another little hand shoots up, a little boy this time. He says, yes, the name of the baby was Wayne. <laughs> she, 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 she said, no, no, I, no, no why, where did you get that idea from? He said, well, we sing it all the time. <laughs> Away and in a manger. You're fast. Well, of course, the baby's name wasn't Wayne. Uh, he didn't hatch from an egg. It was Jesus. Emmanuel, which means God with us. These three words get right to the heart of everything that we are celebrating here tonight. That is the hope at the heart of all the hype of Christmas. The message that if there is a God who made this whole incredible universe, he is not an absent landlord, he is not a distant superpower, he is not a figment of our corporate imagination. He is Emmanuel, with us, here for us, near to us, reaching out to us tonight in this church, even as he did 2,000 years ago in that cow shed. The good news of Christmas is simply this, that the God of a million galaxies is on your side. It's a message of hope. I'm sure you remember the wonderful opening ceremony of the Olympics, a moment of great hope for the nation this year. 
And in particular, I'm thinking of the moment when Emily Sande sang that classic hymn, Abide With Me. Those words were written more than 150 years ago by a Scottish man who knew that he had only three weeks to live. 900 million people heard her sing these words, Abide with me, fast falls the eventide. The darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, help of the helpless, oh, abide with me. That is a universal heart cry. Stay with me. Help me. Be here for me. And God's response to that prayer is Christmas. I will abide with you. I am with you. I will never leave you. I am Emmanuel. You may remember the opening scene of Shakespeare's play, Hamlet. It all begins on the dark battlements of Elsinore. It's winter time, it's close to Christmas, and a soldier called Marcellus, talking about Christmas, says, so hallowed and so gracious is the time. There is something hallowed and gracious about this time of year. We know it. We know it's more than just the stuff on the shelves in the shops, more than just the food in our fridges, more than just the reruns on TV. We know there is something magical, mysterious, and many of us believe profoundly meaningful about Christmas, a sense of hope. So hallowed and gracious is the time says Marcellus, and Horatio replies, so have I heard and do in part believe. Maybe that is precisely how you feel tonight. I do in part believe that this is a hallowed and gracious time. Maybe you've done an alpha course this year. And you've moved from a position of complete disbelief to a place of open-mindedness towards faith. You do in part believe. Maybe you've come along with someone tonight and frankly, this feels very strange to be singing these songs and praying these prayers and yet you'd like it to be true. You do in part believe. Or maybe you're a committed Christian. You're good at the believing thing. But frankly, this year, 2012, has been very, very tough. You've taken your share of blows. And it's not as easy to be hopeful this year as it was last year. You do, in part, believe. One of the writers of East Enders... Tony Jordan, someone who understands partial belief very well. He, he's written, he's the lead writer actually on EastEnders. He wrote more than 250 episodes. And he came up with this idea that he wanted to do uh, a version of the nativity story that would be a bit like Allo, Allo. <laughs> it wouldn't be set in a... In a bar in France in the Second World War, but in a stable in the first century in Palestine. And he pitched the idea to the BBC, who bought it, literally bought it. And so he sat down to try and do the work. And as he began to research it, he says this, the more I thought about it, the more I realized that this would be a travesty to take the most beautiful story in the history of the world and turn it into a cheap gag. And so he really began researching. He started by reading the Gospels. It's a very good place to start. I recommend it. And then he looked at history. 
and realized that this stuff isn't just in the Bible, but contemporary historians back it up. And then he talked to theologians, and he says he even eventually consulted NASA about the whole star thing. Gradually, he says, I became more and more convinced that Jesus, who was born in this way, is the Son of God. And that the nativity story is a true story and a thing of beauty. The only thing I know for sure, he says, is that the words of Jesus Christ are the most truthful thing I have ever heard. As a blueprint for mankind, it is so smart that it couldn't ever have come from a clever philosopher. What is that blueprint? What are those words of Jesus that carry such power 2,000 years later? Well, I suppose he says to this war-torn world, love your enemies. Maybe he says to bankers, you know, it's better to give than to receive. Or to politicians, let your yes be yes and your no, no. Or to celebrities with secrets, there is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. Or maybe he says to us tonight, if we're feeling a little lost, I am the way and the truth and the life. Or if we're feeling a little lonely, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I am Emmanuel. Perhaps you've come to know Jesus. More than just a vague belief. This is real. This is dynamic. This is a relationship with the God who made you. Or perhaps you half believe like Horatio on the battlements of Elsinore. Or maybe Christianity is just so alien to you that frankly the baby in the manger might as well be called Wayne and hatch out of an egg. Or maybe your secret heart cry tonight is simply abide with me, fast falls the eventide. Whatever brings you here tonight, The message of Christmas is this, I am with you. I am for you. I am indeed Emmanuel. In the light of such a hope, how should we prepare our hearts for Christmas?